You're listening to a message from Gateway Church Geelong. We hope it blesses you. For more information about Gateway, visit gc.org.au. You know, today we're going we're gonna to share this morning around the Word of God. We're going gonna to hear about the gift of encouragement. Who loves the gift of encouragement? My wife loves the gift of encouragement, particularly when it's coming her way. (laughs) Jess loves it. Absolutely loves it. We talk about the gift of encouragement. In the Bible, it talks about exhortation. And sometimes people talk about exhortation just being encouragement. And I think from a biblical understanding... Exhortation is more than just encouragement. It's a supernatural encouragement. And we're going to talk about that a whole lot more this morning. And I I truly believe that this message is going to break some things off of our church, break some things off of us personally. There is more that God has for us out of His Word and the revelation of it. Amen? Amen. Last time I shared a couple of weeks ago was out of Romans 12 verse 1. And uh, the passage of Scripture it should be on the screen behind me. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship, or in other versions, your reasonable service to God, to offer yourselves holy and pleasing to God. You know, this understanding that God saves us through Jesus, that He renews us, that He transforms us, And in light of this beautiful realisation, we're called to pursue this new practice of giving ourselves. That's what I take away from Romans 12 verse 1. We're called to pursue this new practice, not the old practice of presenting other things to God for forgiveness, but present ourselves to God because He he saved us. This beautiful realisation, every part of ourselves presented to Him. And what I want to look at today out of Romans 12, we're going to stay in Romans 12 today as part of our, our come follow Jesus journey that we're on as a church. And even in this passage of Scripture, the Apostle Paul is preparing us, getting us ready. He even starts the passage with words of encouragement, words of exhortation. Because when we see that word, I urge you, Urge is another word for encouragement. Lots of words in the Bible that are tied into the definition of encouragement. Implore, beseech. For those of you who have Bibles, have that word, beseech. It's all encouragement and pushing us towards God and all the plans that He has for us. See, that word exhort is to urge, to encourage, to to thoroughly encourage. Who's ever felt thoroughly encouraged before? I think three hands went up. By the end of today, you will be thoroughly encouraged. You will be able to put your hand up and say, I am part of a people that are thoroughly encouraged to pursue God in new practices. See, from the Latin, ex meaning thoroughly, and hortari, I'm fluent. (laughs) Fluent in Latin and other languages like English, (laughs) Australian. (laughs) Fluent in Australian. So hortari meaning encourage, to thoroughly encourage. Exhort, to thoroughly encourage. That's what that word means. Part of the word based in Latin, part of the word based in Old French, to thoroughly encourage. So the Apostle Paul starts with urging us or thoroughly encouraging us to look at who God is and what He's done and what He calls us to respond in with a new practice. Thoroughly encourage us, imploring with us, beseeching us. Come on, present yourselves holy before God. So that we, we read Paul, we catch this glimpse of him being so generous with his words, so generous with his exhortation, so ge- generous with his, his thorough encouragement towards us. 
generous in supernatural encouragement is the Apostle Paul towards us. This urging, this encouraging to point people to God, pointing people to a new spiritual purpose that that lines up with a new spiritual life, salvation, that new spiritual life that God has put inside every single one of us who have responded, believed and confessed in Jesus living through Christ, living through the Holy Spirit. I want to remind us today out of Corinthians, I want to remind us again out of Corinthians, why spiritual gifts are given and why they're important. Maybe some people say, oh, I don't, you know, that's for other people. Yeah, maybe it is for other people. I, I truly, truly believe it's for every single one of us. Every single one of us. Because in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7, it says this, A spiritual gift is given to each of us, not to some of us, not to one of us, but to each of us. Given to each of us so we can help each other. Given to us so we can actually share it with others, so we can encourage others, so we can lift up others. Given to each of us. So the truth of the matter is is this, even if you only operate, purely operate in in just the standard natural encouragement of being kind and nice to people, you're going to do good things. You're going to encourage people. You're going to build people up. But Paul is not imploring us to merely do that. Paul is not saying, yeah, just partake of the natural gifts. It'll be all right. That's enough. He's actually saying to us to launch into the supernatural gifts. Not as individuals, but as many parts working together. And so we read on in Romans 12, starting at verse 4. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. In His grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take their responsibility seriously. And if your gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Do it gladly. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honouring each other. Imploring us. Imploring us to pursue this, this lifestyle, this new practice. See, the reality is, if we... If verse 4 was actually at verse 1, we wouldn't be prepared to actually offer ourselves as living sacrifices to God, an understanding of who God has actually made us be now, made us to be holy and pleasing in His image because of Christ. So if we went into verse 1, just as the body has many parts and each part has a special function, it's like, well, I'm doing this. and No, you can't do that because that's what I'm I'm called. No, there's many parts. And we're all called to do certain things well. And the reality is some of us may even do the same things really, really well. That's okay. It's a blessing, isn't it? As far as I'm concerned, I would love to have a church 100% full of people who are just encouragers. Just speaking hope and optimism. The plans of God. Naomi's like, yes! Just everybody aim it at her. I'm actually not even kidding. (laughs) See, exhortation, a supernatural encouragement is one of the gifts listed in Romans 12, 6 to 8. And I've got to be honest with you, even if you start off doing this naturally, it's a really great place to start. As in when you see someone, you're looking so good. It's so good to see you. Just encouraging people. Lifting people up with your words. 
Such a powerful place for us to outwit from. The Holy Spirit gives us different supernatural abilities to serve Christ and one another. The gift of exhortation is this unique ability to encourage and edify others. Edify, they eat the words. It fills them up to edify others. If you're someone who delights in finding scriptures that apply to certain situations, and I wanna encourage you, edify others with those scriptures that you find about certain, let the, let the word be an encouragement to them. It's what God's called you to do. Let it strengthen their faith. Let the supernatural encouragement strengthen their faith. You know, this gift of supernatural encouragement, exhortation, often crosses over into teaching and counselling and discipleship training. And you know, if you're an exhorter, you're gifted by God for believers. You're gifted by God for believers to encourage, to help each other. That's what the gifts are for. Holy Spirit, let it be activated in every single one of us. So you've been gifted to come alongside people and point people to Jesus with your supernatural encouragement. Notice I say that you've been gifted to point people to Jesus. It's not about you because we've, we've put ourselves before God as living sacrifices, right? Burn all of us up, God. Let your holiness be left and let us point people to Jesus. It's not about making ourselves feel better. It, when you see someone encouraged, it does make you feel better anyway, but that's not what it's about. It's about pointing people to Jesus. So you encourage people to this, this model of victorious living through Christ. What's this model that I'm talking about? It's like people are, don't talk about models in church. The Christ-like model <laughs> of living like Jesus, that one, the only one that actually works, that's the one I'm talking about this morning. Pushing people towards this model of victorious living, this Christ-like living. Notice I'm not saying let's be super spiritual today. That's, that, that word has a little bit of a thing attached to it, doesn't it? When someone's like super spiritual, people are like, <laughs> I'm not talking about religious practice. I'm not talking about super spiritual religious, I'm talking about Gospel, biblical practice, fruits of the Spirit activated, pointing people to Jesus. This is about presenting yourself before God, a living sacrifice, and allowing God to use you to point people to Him and be strengthened in Him. This is about sharing the gifts to help others around you. You know, people with the gift of exhortation don't merely proclaim the truth. It's really easy to stand back and proclaim the truth to people. So we've seen a lot of that over the last couple of weeks on social media. It's really easy to stand back and yell and pro proclaim the truth to people. But that's not what the gift of exhortation, supernatural encouragement is. See, when you're activated in that, that gift of exhortation, people who are gifted in that, they want to develop relationships with people. It's not just a pat on the back, say, good job, keep going and then disappear for a month. No, it's about discipleship and spending time with people and building friendships and relationships with people. If you want to encourage someone, invest yourself in their world. Invest yourself in relationship with them. What, what does this look like? How about we have a, an actual example of what this looks like? Rather than say to someone, you should begin reading the Psalms every day. Silence. Oh, okay. No worries. Thanks for that. I'm struggling. I'm struggling at the moment. Thank, thank you for that, but uh, I'll try that. Don't try this at home. See, rather than that, the gift of encouragement, the supernatural gift of encouragement would say, let's start a Bible study together on Psalms. How about coffee on Tuesday morning? That's what a relational supernatural gift of encouragement does. It walks a journey with people. Encouragement, it's a beautiful thing. It lifts you. It lifts your head. It empowers you to believe. It, it causes you to believe. 
It strengthens your resolve. It, it increases your ability to be resilient. Is that true for anybody in this place? I know, I know it's true for me. It opens your eyes to potential. It causes you to embrace optimism and ultimately increases your faith to believe that God has big plans for you to be part of. Big plans for you to be part of. The kingdom, the mission, the commission that He's called us to. Thriving and functioning as a part of that. Yet we live in this age where encouragement is almost a foreign language. It's really hard to find encouragement things in social, social media. Unless you like follow one of those like verse a day type things. But if you just follow normal people, there's not many normal people who are just pumping out encouragement. It may be not even be negative, but it's not encouraging. It's just stating the truth. I had breakfast this morning. It was awesome. I'm encouraged by the fact that you had breakfast. It's great. <laughs> you can do it. See, perhaps, perhaps people, maybe let's personalize it. Perhaps you have lived through so much pain, have become so disenfranchised with hope. Pessimism and unbelief have exploded in your life because no one has encouraged you. Maybe you've been through so much hurt or your friend, if you're asking on behalf of somebody else, your friend has been so hurt that you can't hear encouragement or hope anymore. So even though it may be happening around you, it's just like, I, I, not even hearing that anymore. I, I see this, but I'm hearing you don't like me. Because it's a practice that's been walked in. So the truth of the matter is this, where there is no encouragement, there is starvation. Where there is no encouragement, there is starvation. But where there is encouragement, many are fed and thrive. Where there is encouragement, many are fed and thrive. Would you like me to back that up with the Bible? You should. <laughs> Please say yes. <laughs> Proverbs 10 verse 21. Got a couple of different versions up there just in case you wanted to be sure that it's coming from the right place. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. The lips of the righteous nourish many, but fools die for lack of sense. The words of the godly encourage many, but fools are destroyed by the lack of common sense. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for lack of wisdom. I want us to focus on the first part of that verse this morning. The lips of the righteous feed many. What do they feed them with? Supernatural encouragement. The prophetic. The Word of God. They speak out hope out of the Word of God over the lives of people. And what does it do to them? It feeds them and they thrive they don't get caught in a place of not having common sense anymore. They get caught in a place of not having wisdom anymore. See, where there's no exhortation and encouragement to nourish and feed people, the concept of common sense and wise, th wise thinking wipes people out like famine. Where there is no exhortation and encouragement, people get wiped out like, like a famine sweeping through a land. It starves their soul starves their spirit. Spirit of God's in them, but it's like they just need someone to speak the Word of God into them just to strengthen their faith. But where there is encouragement, many are fed and thrive. Where there is encouragement, many are fed and thrive. Let's look at Proverbs 16, 24. It's a beautiful word. Pleasant words are like honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Gracious words are like honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Exhortation, supernatural encouragement, pleasant, gracious words, build people up, bring sweetness and healing to them. Not talking about just being kind, not talking about being nice, supernatural encouragement, speaking God's plans and promises out over people's lives. 
Let's turn to Proverbs 25, verse 25. Some people are th- thinking right now, 2 for 22, right? No, 25, 25. Showing my age, aren't I? People are like, cricket, what? I don't understand. We'll just let it go. It's okay. Just encourage me. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Proverbs 25, verse 25. Good news from far away is like cold water to the thirsty. Like a cool drink of water when you're worn out and weary is a letter from a long lost friend. I want to bring some some thought around this. See, when you're worn out, when you're at the end of your rope, it can literally feel like you're far away. Even though you're not, it can literally feel like you're at the end at the end of my rope, I feel like I'm in a desert and there's nobody else around. I feel so alone right now. Perhaps even feeling like you don't belong. Perhaps even feeling like you've been banished or excluded and don't fit in. The powerful word of supernatural encouragement is like a cold drink. Is like a cold refreshing to someone's soul refreshing and bringing health to their bones. It strengthens them. People's bones are weak. It's sort of like they get frail. It's like it strengthens, strengthens straight shoulders. So when we talk about supernatural encouragement, when we, we talk about that verse of just being, feeling like you're, you, know, you feel like you've been banished and you're so far away, it cannot be further from the truth when we talk about supernatural encouragement. When people try to connect with you, they are trying to bring a cold drink of water to you in your desert. When people are trying to spend time with you, catch up with you, want to ring you and have it, they're literally trying to bring cold water to you in your desert. When you feel like you don't fit and you don't belong and someone comes and tries to make contact with you, they're trying to bring a cold drink of water to you in your desert. And you push back and you resist. I've been hurt before and you said you'd do it before and you didn't. They're trying to bring a cold drink of water to you in your desert. Take the water. Let your bones be strengthened. Let your soul be refreshed and walk the journey of restoration. So I don't know about you, but if I was lost in a desert, if I was alone, If I was physically dehydrated, I would embrace the cool drink of water to nourish and replenish my physical body. Wouldn't even think twice. So I'm out here alone. I'm going to die. I'm going to die out here alone. If I stay out in this desert by myself, under this beating sun, under this beating culture, if I stay out here by myself under this beating culture, I'm going to die out here. I don't know about you, but if someone brought me a cup of cold water under a beating sun in the desert, under a beating culture, I'd take it. I would take that supernatural encouragement. I would take those those words that are coming out of those lips that edify and lift my soul. It's just the same with the lips of an encourager. They're speaking replenishment to your soul. Church, let's speak replenishment to people's souls. Supernatural encouragement through the Word of God. Allowing your spirit to, and soul to rehydrate with the encouragement of God. You know that word encourage. Encourage means to inspire with courage. Inspire with courage. The spirit and confidence to inspire someone. And the ment on the end, the M-E-N-T on the end. It means the final state or condition to the word you've spoken over someone. It's finality. It's a state. It's a condition because you've been inspired with courage, spiritual encouragement, supernatural encouragement, and confidence comes to you. It strengthens you. Exhortation, it's supernatural encouragement. Exhortation is supernatural encouragement. Encouragement, it's a product of action. Encouragement is a product of action. The action of your gift being given and activated. 
because you've stepped into a new practice of being a living sacrifice. If we go back to Romans 12 verse 1, activated with the gifts of the Spirit. And I, know, I know we're focusing on one of those gifts this morning. But I, I perceive that for us as a church, this is the moment for us to be activating this gift of supernatural encouragement. This is the moment. This, we, we, we've got other gifts activated and we continue to do that. But this is a moment where we need to focus on this. This is something that we need to get better at, every single one of us. I'm talking to me this morning. I've had this revelation. I'm activating this revelation within my marriage. I'll just put it out this morning. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling myself that I need to do this too, to a greater level. We've had breakthrough in our marriage because of this. Do you want breakthrough in your marriage? Do you want breakthrough in your relationships? Activate the supernatural gift of encouragement. Speak life and hope into the people around you. Using your words. Maybe for some of us, that's not a, necessarily a strength. Using our words. Use your words. Speak encouragement into people's lives. Use God's word. Use your actions to feed and nourish others. That's what God's called us to do. Supernatural encouragement that inspires, that urges and implores confidence and courage to the spirit that's within us, that our mind, our spirit, our body would produce action when it comes to this gift. Why do we want to use the gift of exhortation or supernatural encouragement? Why, why do we want to do that? To remind the hearer to remind the person that we're talking to of the powerful and amazing work of Christ in their life. To remind them of the amazing work of Christ in their life. We wanna be people that are strengthened in faith. We want them to be people that are strengthened in their faith and their belief. As I've been studying, studying this, just in the New Testament alone, just began to like read through and I just, I just looked at scriptures that talked about encouragement. I didn't look at scriptures that talked about beseech. I didn't look at scriptures that talked about urge. I didn't look at scriptures that talked about implore. I just looked at scriptures about encourage or encouragement. My friends, there is a pattern in the Bible and it started with Jesus. The pattern of encouragement started with Jesus. So this morning, we're going to read through some scriptures. If you're taking notes, you might just want to write the title down because you're not going to have time. I'm just, I'm reading through this. It's like speed reading. or it's faster reading than normal. <laughs> faster reading than normal. Matthew 9 verse 2. Some people brought him a paralysed man on a mat. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralysed man, Be encouraged, my child, your sins are forgiven. Supernatural encouragement. What did it, it, actually, it actually released a miracle. It, it released a miracle in that man's life. Matthew 9, 22. So I got my two for 22 lined up. Matthew 9, 2. Matthew 9, 22. I should stay on the plan this morning, shouldn't I? <laughs> Thank you for that encouragement, even though it felt like sarcasm. Matthew 9, 22. Jesus turned around and when He saw, saw her, He said, Daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was healed at that very moment. Encouragement makes way for healing. Acts eleven twenty three. When He came and He had seen the grace of God, He was glad and encourage them all with the purpose of heart that they should continue with the Lord. Strengthens faith. Strengthens faith to continue in the things that God has called you to. Acts 13, 14 and 15. On the Sabbath, they went to the meeting place and took their places. After the reading of the Scriptures, God's law and the prophets, the president of the meeting asked them, friends, do you have anything you want to say? A word of encouragement, perhaps. So when you head out into the foyer and you're having coffee together, a word of encouragement, perhaps? <laughs> what have you got to say to the people around you? You going to talk about how rubbish your week was? A word of encouragement, perhaps? Yeah. Lift people up around you. Yeah. Fine, surely one good thing. 
Did the postman put the em envelope in the right letterbox? Go with that. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Just start with the simple things. No, search God's heart. God, what do, you, what do you want me to share with this person to encourage them and lift them up? Let the supernatural encouragement come out to people as you're in, in conversation with them. Acts 14.22 where they strengthen the believers, they encourage them to continue in the faith, reminding them that they must suffer many hardships to enter the kingdom. Ooh, that's not really encouraging. Yes, it is. It strengthens your faith when you remind us like everything that I go through, it's because God has called me to the kingdom plan and I'm presenting myself as a living sacrifice. I'm with that plan. I get what's going on. He's made me holy. He's made me pleasing and I'm with his plan. Acts 15, 31. When they read it, they rejoiced over its encouragement. What does encouragement do? It causes people to rejoice. It causes exclamations of rejoicing to come out of people. Acts 15, 32, Judas and Silas, who themselves were prophets, said much to encourage and strengthen the believers. The words that come out of our mouth should be speaking encouragement. It's really easy to point out what's wrong with people. Everyone can see it. They can see it. They don't need you to point it out. They need you to point out the strength of Christ within them. Point them towards Jesus. That's what God has called us to do. Acts 16, 38 to 40. When the officers reported this, the judges panicked. They had no idea that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. They hurried over and apologised, personally escorted them from the jail. And then they asked them if they would please, wouldn't please leave the city. Walking out of the jail, Paul and Silas went straight to Lydia's house, saw their friends again, encouraged them in the faith, and only then went on their way. Released out of jail, what, what would you do if you were jailed wrongly, you were put there, you actually hadn't done anything wrong. What would you do? You'd be like, I'm out of here because like, if they change their mind, I don't want to be around the place. No, no, they had to stop at a friend's house first. You know, you're always like, you're about to go somewhere and somebody in your house is like, oh, I've just got to do this first. I'll, I'll, I'll be, no, you go to the car, I'll be out in a second. Sometimes there are some things that you actually just have to do first. If God, sometimes, I'm not speaking to husband and wives this morning, I'm talking about the, the mission of the Lord is what we're talking about this morning. Sometimes God will speak to you to go and give a word of encouragement to someone and you're looking at your timetable going, oh, I said, I said that I would be home at this. And I'm sure that if you call your husband or wife, call your family member, I'm sure that if you were to say to them, God just spoke to me. The gift of exhortation has been released in my life. Supernatural encouragement needs to come out of me to that. Person. I'm sure that if you did that, they'll be like, no, you need to come home now. No, of course not. Because they want to see that activated in you because they know that on the other end of it, when you come home, you're probably going to release some to them too. It's a culture of supernatural encouragement that we step into. Acts 21 to 2. With things back to normal, Paul called the disciples together and encouraged them to keep up the good work in Ephesus. Then saying his goodbyes, he left for Macedonia, traveling through the country, passing from one gathering to another. He gave constant encouragement, lifting their spirits and charging them with fresh hope. What does encouragement do? Lifts people's heads, lifts people's spirits, charges you with fresh hope for what God has called you to do and where he's called you to do it. Amen. Acts 23.11, I told you there were some Scriptures. There is a pattern of encouragement within the Scripture. That night, the Lord appeared to Paul and said, be encouraged. Hang on, the Lord even appears to people and says this? There must be something in it. There must be something in this. The Lord appeared to Paul and said, be encouraged, Paul. Just as you have been witnessed to me here in Jerusalem, you must preach the good news in Rome as well. What does encouragement do? It releases you into what God has called you to do. Romans 1, 11 to 13. I long to see you so that I may impart some spiritual gift to make you strong. That is, that you may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. Kind of sounds really familiar to when Zach shared about mutual mutual refreshment, doesn't it? See, the seeds already been planted. 
when Zach shared around small groups with this mutual refreshment that happens when people come together. It's exhortation. It's supernatural encouragement. It's the Word of God. It's the pattern that God wants us to step into as individuals and as a church. Galatians 2 verse 9. In fact, James, Peter and John, who were well known as pillars of the church, recognised the gift God had given me. And they accepted Barnabas and me as their co-workers. They encouraged us to keep preaching to the Gentiles while they continue the work to the Jews. Barnabas, who knows what Barnabas means? Son of encouragement. Son of encouragement. Oh, for us all to be sons of encouragement, sons and daughters of encouragement. The gift, gift activated within us. James and Peter and John recognised and accepted and they, they encouraged us to keep doing it. I encourage you to keep doing what God has called you to do. I encourage you today. 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 2. Last one. We sent Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker in God's service, in spreading the gospel of Christ to strengthen and encourage you in your faith. It's for purpose. It's to strengthen those who are struggling in faith. It's to release the new things that God has for people in their Christian walk. See, supernatural encouragement, the gift of exhortation. Encouragement releases people into their mission. Encouragement releases people into their purpose. Encouragement releases people into relationships. Encouragement strengthens and encourages your faith and the faith of others. Encouragement breathes life and courage into each other. Encouragement brings us closer. Encouragement increases our vulnerability. Encouragement spurs us on. Encouragement breaks, breaks and changes atmospheres. Encouragement releases people into their restoration and healing. It's about miracles. Encouragement is a pattern that is biblical and Christ-like. Encouragement is the gift of the Spirit and a gift to pour into others. Encouragement, I'm going to say it one more time. Encouragement restores relationships. I'd be clapping too. Encouragement is where it's at. Supernatural encouragement is where it's at. See, the Apostle Paul in Romans 12 verse 1, using, using his gift of exhortation, using his gift of supernatural encouragement, speaks to us so clearly, points us towards living out our faith, presenting ourselves and offering ourselves holy and pleasing to God. This is our true and proper worship. This is our reasonable service to God in light of His mercy and just allowing ourselves to be completely in a place where we serve God. See, I believe that this, this Romans 12 verse 1 is the start, is the path to preparing us to be ready so that we understand that each of us is uniquely placed within the body of Christ for purpose. First, we get ourselves right. First, we bring ourselves before God. It's like, I don't need to do anything to be made any more holy. I'm as holy as I'm ever going to get. I'm as holy as I'm ever going to get. Will my mind be cleaned up on a daily schedule? Absolutely. But my spirit, Christ is in me. The hope of glory. I'm as, holy, I'm as holy as Jesus has made me, pure and perfect in His eyes, not a blemish. I'm laboring on that for a little bit this morning because I know there's people in this place who perhaps you see yourself as less than. Perhaps you see yourself as someone who's like, I wish I could be as good as that person. Don't let the enemy's words and lies cut in on your journey that God has called you to be on. It's not true. No one in this place is better than anyone else in this place. We are all perfect and holy in the eyes of God. No levels, no title makes anyone better than anyone else. We are members of the body, members of the body together. Maybe as the band comes this morning, a couple of things this morning. I, I truly believe, you know, when we talk about the gifts being activated in our life, there's, there's one thing that is required us, of us for the gifts to be activated in our life. It's to earnest, earnestly desire them. 
That's, that's what's required of us. And so we talk about, maybe for someone like myself, I, I grew up in a home where there wasn't a lot of natural encouragement, let alone supernatural encouragement. Did my parents love me? Absolutely my parents loved me. Probably more than the other kids. <laughs> Cut that out of the video. <laughs> But when, when natural encouragement or supernatural encouragement isn't a culture, it's really hard to step out and just activate natural encouragement, let alone supernatural. And so this morning, regardless of where you're at in the journey, you may be like totally locked in, you've got it all together, and you're in a place where you're like, God, if this is what you're speaking to our church about, then I, I'm going to begin right now to start earnestly desiring for that gift to be activated in my life. Allow me to step out of it. Allow me to encourage people. In fact, I'll start just by naturally encouraging people and speaking hope into people's worlds. I'll come alongside of them. I'll have coffee with them. I'll, I'll speak hope into their life. But I'm going to begin desiring for that supernatural gift to be activated too. Maybe you're in this place and you like to, to get to that place first. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. Maybe you're in a place this morning where like some of those people that Jesus spoke to, you need Him to say, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Step into your healing. Step into your restoration this morning. Maybe you need to be encouragement at that level this morning. We're all at different parts of the journey. We're all part of the same body and equally as important as each other. But we're at different stages of the journey and that, that's okay. Wherever you're at this morning, there is somewhere in this message for every single one of us. And I hope, I hope for people that are in this place who are already activated in the supernatural gift of encouragement. I hope that because we as a church are taking that journey, that it releases you to excel like never before. That it's making a way for your gift to be actually so evident and used within this body, but not just here, for the well-being of others also. Why don't we close our eyes this morning? Lord God, we just we thank you. We thank you that that you love us so dearly. We thank you that you sent Jesus to die on a cross for every single person, not just in this place, but all humanity. Rose again on the third day for the forgiveness of our sins. We we rejoice in that. We're so encouraged by that, God. We rejoice in that. I I, I just I just pray this morning. Anyone in this place? Who, who doesn't know Jesus personally, who doesn't even know what it is to have, have hope and joy dwell within them. Holy Spirit, God, I just pray, let people's hearts be open to that this morning. If that's you, if you've been walking through life and you're just, just trying to make it by, you know, God doesn't want you to walk that walk anymore. He wants you to be full of hope, full of Jesus, forgiven, released into a glorious life, to, to be in a place where you're so, so, so helped by Him, so restored by Him, so encouraged by Him, that no longer you're just trying to survive, that you're actually encouraging people around you too. That, that's the life that God has for you. And so this morning, just with everyone's eyes closed, if, if you're in this place and you say, yeah, that's me. I, I want to receive Jesus. I want, I want to believe in Jesus. I want to confess my faith in Him. I want to be strengthened by Him. I want to believe in Him. I want to believe that God, that God rose Him from the grave on the third day. If that's you, can I encourage you? Just, just pop your hand up and put it down. No one looking around this morning. If that's you, yeah, awesome. Thank you. Is there anybody else who's like, yeah, I need to do that. I need to get my heart in a place where I'm forgiven and restored before God so that I can be released into being the person that God has called me to be for my family, for my friends, for everyone I come into contact, but ultimately because God wants relationship with you personally. Anyone else just want to say, yeah, I need to do that. Just with our eyes closed this morning, what I'd love us to do, you know, maybe you didn't put your hand up because you're a little bit embarrassed this morning. That's okay. I, I want to encourage you. Pray this prayer with us. For those who did put your hand up, pray this prayer with us this morning. This is a prayer of inviting Jesus into our heart to forgive us. We're going to repent of our sin this morning. 
we're going to step into everything that God has for us. Repeat this prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank You that You died on the cross, that You were buried and You rose again for the forgiveness of my sins. I come to You today. I repent of my sins. Forgive me. I surrender my life to You. From this day on, I confess that You're Lord of my life. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Awesome. If you prayed that prayer for the first time or maybe you prayed it again, I want to come and speak to me this morning. I'd love to encourage you and point you to the next steps that God actually has for you on your journey. For every single other person this morning, this this is what I want us to do. We're, We're going to sing through this song, this song about following Jesus. And as we do that, I would, I would love you. If, if you need prayer this morning around encouragement, if you need restoration and healing around encouragement from hurts, whether it be old or, or recent, whatever, whatever it is, as the song's being sung, I want to invite you to come to the front this morning. We, we would love to pray with you. If you're in your seat this morning, you don't need to do that because you're in a, you're in a, a, a good place. As we're singing this song, I invite you this morning, begin earnestly desiring for the gift of courage to be released and activated within your life. In fact, for as long as the song goes, can I encourage you to fervently lean into that? Don't just do a 10 second, yeah, Lord, release it, and then just tune out. Let's fervently focus in this morning of this being something that supernaturally breaks something within us and our church, amen? Why don't we stand this morning as the band leads us?